Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and this is a short extra video covering ULA's launch of the AEHF-5 satellite. And honestly, I wasn't that interested in the launch, but then the launch happened, and boy was it an absolutely stunning affair. Because of some ground, uh, well, issues on the ground, they ended up delaying the launch by about 15-20 minutes. And by the time they launched, it was 40 minutes before dawn. And we all know that means that when the rocket goes up high enough, it will eventually pass above the horizon and the sun will illuminate it. And this, of course, leads to amazing looking launch trails. The customers also wanted the satellite to be as close to geostationary orbit as possible, and ULA used a number of interesting tricks to make this happen. First of all, they used five solid rocket boosters on their Atlas. This is the boosters burning out, so you can see the, uh, the exhaust here fading away as the propellant uh, you know, is depleted. And this is the staging now because you see the one in the middle and then these two on the side. So now we just have the core powered by those RD-180 engines. And of course, we can also pause for a moment to watch these tiny dots twinkling in the sky. But more importantly, this is the moment where the thing got high enough that the sun is starting to illuminate it. Now it's heading out east over the Atlantic, and that means it's actually heading practically straight into the sun. So if you look at roughly the 10 o'clock position there, you see a dark band forming. Now, as the rocket gets higher and higher up, the low pressure of the atmosphere means that the rocket exhaust expands out sideways. It's not like a jet straight, you know, going out the back. It's more like a wide flat cone. And at this point, you can actually see this shadow. This is a shadow of the rocket being cast upon its own rocket exhaust. Normally, when you get up to that high, the rocket exhaust starts to fade out and become sooty. But because they're flying into the sun, because the camera is pointing backwards into the darkness, the trail is illuminated and it's like standing on top of a hill. And so you can see that shadow from the rocket. And it gets better still. This, is, this got me really excited, I have to admit. And the great thing about these launches is that they're visible for hundreds of miles around. They're really obvious. You can't miss them. This is the thing that kind of thing that causes car accidents because people stare at them. So by this point now, the trail is expanding so widely, you can actually see the shape of the rocket. You can see the fairing at the top. And we're getting close to the point where we're going to drop that fairing because the atmosphere is now thin enough that the rocket doesn't need it. And there we go. Now, I'm just going to pause this and rewind it. I think this might be one of my favorite rocket cam shots. So this is a stage separation. See the ice that is dislodged by this. Everything appears to fall downwards, but of course that's an illusion. The rocket is actually accelerating, you know, with the camera looking backwards. Therefore, anything that gets detached, anything that's not getting pushed, appears to fall down the side of the rocket. The next thing to see is on the left, the shadow of the rocket. We see the fairing falling down before it even falls into frame. On the Atlas V, these fairings are huge. They don't just include the payload, but they also enclose the Centaur upper stage. They start at the top of the first stage. Now, they're kind of thin, and so the force of the jettisoning actually causes them to flap back and forth. So that's why they oscillate as they fall down. But they're falling towards this layer, the exhaust layer that's essentially going out kind of diagonally downwards. And you see the shadow they're casting. As soon as they hit that, they're going to disrupt the flow of exhaust gas. And you see it creates a shadow out to the side there. You can also see the left side fairing is producing the same shadow. That is actually not a shadow caused by light. It's a shadow caused by blocking the exhaust that would be flowing out sideways. So that's being bounced back and therefore there is nothing for the light to reflect off. I think this is such an amazing sequence because normally you couldn't see the payload fairings being jettisoned and falling off the side of the rocket. You wouldn't have the camera angles needed, but this covered it in, the, in shadow form. I mean, you have to have a camera there if you want to see that. The view from the ground, you, you can actually see the payload fairings detaching at the bottom of the frame. You can also still see some of the boosters spinning around. Interestingly, those boosters were dropped before the spacecraft went above the horizon and was illuminated, but of course they had enough momentum that they kept going, and you can see in this sequence they're actually starting to fall back to Earth, you know, at least compared to the booster. The AEHF payload wasn't particularly classified, but I honestly wonder now, given this shadow quality, could you reconstruct a model or a usable model of the payload if you were some adversary? A strange idea. 
Uh, of, this is also another interesting shot because you can see the dark trail that was left during the initial launch in darkness and the bright trail that is now in the sky. It's kind of cool to see those occluding each other. And then, of course, the first stage has done its job, second stage kicks in, and then it's Atlas Centaur all the way. And the Atlas Centaur actually still had quite a job ahead of it. There was one thing I noticed that was different between the previous AEHF 4 and AEHF 5. So these are the guides in the press pack. The one on the left is the previous mission, and the one on the right is the current mission. Now, after they uh, do their initial burn to work to raise the Apogee up, they then perform a subsequent burn to put the sp uh, spacecraft as close to geostationary or orbit as possible. And if you look at the numbers, the latest launch is getting way closer. And the question I had, how did they do this given that the rocket is the same and the payload is practically the same? How did they get better performance? And I didn't have to dig very far to find the answer because they actually mentioned it in the webcast. They have something called an extended mission kit in the Centaur. This is uh, extra batteries so that they can stay operational longer and an extra layer of insulation so that liquid hydrogen uh, remains liquid for longer. The previous mission didn't have this, so its Centaur had a sell-by date. That meant that when it was heading up towards geostationary orbit and it wanted to make that circularization burn, they couldn't get all the way out, so they had to do it slightly early, which meant that they would be in an elliptical orbit. By adding this extra time, they can go all the way to geostationary orbit and then add the burn there so that they're getting better performance. And the other thing they do to provide the best service for the customer is they're doing something called minimal residuals shutdown. Normally when you're putting a spacecraft into an orbit, the engine burns until it hits its target trajectory. And before you launch, you have to select that target trajectory based upon how much fuel you expect to be left. And you always want to leave a buffer. Well, in this case, they wanted to deliver the maximum amount of performance possible. Therefore, they burn it until the fuel hits the point where the engine safety system shut down the engine. So those are two neat little tricks that they can use depending upon the customer's requirements. And of course, that is one spectacular rocket launch and I'm really glad that I actually set my alarm to wake me up at 3 a.m. so I could watch it. Even sitting through the delays, this moment with the stage separation was absolutely stunning and it is probably my favorite piece of rocket cam footage that I've seen in a long time. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.